All right, I've decided to make a video about cyberpunk. <sighs> I'm in my cyberpunk getup, and uh, my room is trashed and full of stupid consumerist monuments. So I think I'm sad. Uh, I spent I probably put about 80 hours in the game, and I did a good amount of the side content. Uh, the game, the best word to describe the game is a mess. It's buggy. It's not so bad on PC, but um, it's a mess beyond that just because of the discourse surrounding it, which I think is not great. I have particular reasons for that before anyone decides it so because I love the game or I hate, you know, I hate the CD project red or whatever um you know i remember seeing the original teaser for this and being like oh that looks really cool and then i saw articles come out where it's like oh is this um popularizing violence against women is this encouraging that or that and i was like oh that's weird because i didn't get that feeling but fine you know, I'm just some white dude on the internet. I might not get that feeling. And it just kind of kept going in that direction where everything about the game was problematic. And I feel like we've reached the culmination of that, you know, where the game came out and it's not this transformative product. So everyone is just going nuts. It's a huge free-for-all everyone's just like what a piece of shit these bastards blah 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 might not be able to curse on youtube but i have so whatever and so now you know now we're here seven years later and it's like you still have the same thing where people are like this game is a punk uh they didn't do enough with the trans uh features or whatever which i I knew they never were going to do a lot with that. I feel like they, way back, they showed off the character creator. It said male, female. Someone got upset, and they're like, oh, well, we're going to make it body types. That's the same thing, right? And it's really not. They just unlock body types and unlock voices, but the game is very, uh, you know, you're either male or female. There's no real non-binary option. I don't... And there's not a non-binary option in Baldur's Gate 3 either, so I don't know how necessary it is, personally. But, um, you know, they got in Call of Duty, so now people want it everywhere, even in a CRPG, where, you know, another gender option means probably, you know, hours and hours of studio time, a new voice, all kinds of different reactions from characters and reactions that are going to be ultimately criticized and picked over so you know they're not going to do it in these crpgs the new pathfinder is probably not going to have a non-binary option um you know so those people are mad about the game don't like it uh, the people who are anticipating it because the game got rushed which isn't really a surprise considering it got delayed twice and when you look back cdpr went went public in 2018 and you know the more executive these companies come the more uh like companies they become going public having a board of trustees or whatever have you the worse the games get i mean that's we know that triple a games have the same problems over and over and over again um and people really I don't think they read in too much, but they really trusted CD Projekt Red. You know, they really, when when those guys showed a video and said, like, there will be so many more interactions, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like, people really bought into that. I personally didn't. I really don't care that much, because even when I play something like Disco Elysium, I still feel railroaded, because you can't create true narrative freedom especially in a game you're doing full voicing for and producing some giant city that's going to be full of a bunch of procedural npcs who are like taking dumps and like you're monitoring their intestines and all that crap it's just not going to happen right like 
I, I wasn't surprised by it, but some people really were. And the game is buggy and it is missing features, but um, you know, the base console has really got screwed by it. So that's kind of the history, I guess. You know, I've been getting it both ways when I talk about this game, because sometimes I'll defend something, I'll be like, well, of course they weren't going to have a procedural trauma team that rides around the city and randomly rescues people, like, yeah. And I'll be a bootlicker for saying that, but I'll be a idiot when I say, like, eh, it would have been nice if you could eat food in first person, rather than every food vendor being a, uh, being like a freaking, just a sales, like RPG, MMORPG vendor where you just buy stuff out of their inventory, which isn't, like, if, I don't know if you guys have ever eaten before outside, but usually you sit down and you order something and you eat it, which would have been cool and they could have done all kinds of stuff with it, but they didn't because it was rushed. Why was it rushed? Probably because of investors and board and this idea that everything needs to be constant progress, the stock needs to be constantly growing, and if the stock isn't constantly growing, everything's a failure, and you might as well push out the game now. So, I mean, I wasn't really surprised by the state of it, considering it was delayed, and considering the nature of these games, where even games I really like, like Pathfinder, like Pathfinder had a horrible memory leak when it came out. Um, Disco Elysium is still like soft locking for people. Um, the for the graphical quality of the game, the specs, even though they tried to lower them, the specs are still pretty high. It's still hard to get that to run on lower end machines, which really shouldn't be an issue. But I mean, those that's just the reality of development, especially with CRPGs that have a lot of other crap they need to think about. Like, it makes sense why Spider-Man or Call of Duty maybe have less problems because there's not some giant narrative or all this scripting or a bunch of missions. The games are much more linear. Even though I'm not saying, oh, uh, that'll be another argument. It's like, oh, Project or Cyberpunk isn't open enough. It's not open enough. But the thing is, like, it is open just like Prototype or even Disco Elysium or Baldur's Gate 1 are open, you know, you could just go anywhere. In Call of Duty, you have missions, and it's like uh, like Robotron or Pac-Man. You know what I mean? It's like Pac-Man versus Pac-Man World. Think of it that way. Uh, or was that, yeah, Pac-Man World. So I'm not really, like, surprised... But I do understand how people feel really betrayed because this has happened to me a lot with games where I remember getting Arcanum and thinking like, wow, this is going to be, they got special in it. It's going to be just like Fallout 1 and 2. And it really was not like Fallout 1 and 2 and it had problems and it was a mess and the combat scenarios were just mind-numbingly boring where you'd go through this mine and it was this huge web and it kept going and kept going and kept going and it was it was ridiculous but I don't know why they did that maybe one day I'll figure it out but you know I was really let down by that game and obsidian games always piss me off like Neverwinter Nights too. I god I hated that game like I hate that game like it was a blood feud and looking back, I don't know why I hated it so much or what I expected. I think that's what's going to happen with people with Cyberpunk. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video, not to really like defend the game or attack the game or necessarily even review the game, but more talk about, which, Christ, many, many, ten minutes in, we're going to actually talk about, I think, the core issue with expectations in this game is that people really believed everything. Like people really trusted CD Projekt Red. And I think that's why people are so incredibly mad. And this is discounting, obviously, the people with base consoles who have a right to be that mad. The people who are really experiencing problems. I'm talking about the people who have it on PC and are like, I thought I'd be able to join Max Tech, so I hate the game. And 
it's obviously very flawed, but I, I don't think I can say it's like a bad or terrible game. I don't think it's a transformative game, but it, it's pretty good. And if you want heavy choice and consequence, there are a lot of other games out there. To me, this is like Skyrim or Oblivion. You know, it's not supposed to be. And even then, Witcher was like Skyrim and Oblivion. I mean, Witcher really had the same sort of setup where there were some things where you could like you can make kira hate you you can make kira like you you could make someone hate you someone like you and then they just weren't in the ending but it wasn't like uh planescape torment with all this hard choices and consequences where you know there were a lot of different permutations on things you could do and the way you could treat people like in the end Geralt could like kill monsters or kind of be like a hippie and be like no it's not right to torture the monsters like those were that was the gambit and i think that's fine but i feel a lot of people are comparing this to witcher 3 and not kind of realizing the games are more similar than you think um but yeah i i do get the sense of betrayal because i felt that way with dragon age i felt it with alpha protocol and now i've went back to those games and i could really appreciate them um Arcanum, I don't think I'll ever appreciate, but um, I did try to go back to it, and it was a little better until it started bugging out on me. Um, and, you know, it's the same thing, it's a similar thing with Dragon Age 2 as well, where that game, they had like 12 months from concept to product, you know? And so, of course, the game is not very good, and models that was always the thing people would look at show how bad the models looked and you know the story was threadbare like at the very ending it would read off everyone's name you had a romance with like all at once because the game didn't care you know and but it, again it was pushed out by ea and they were forced to throw two on it even though it was going to be like dragon age Dungeon Siege, Kirkwald Chronicles, whatever, um, they threw two on it, but it wasn't a proper sequel. And I'm hoping with Cyberpunk something gets fixed about it, but it may not, you know, with, with Human Revolution, like, a huge amount of Hangshaw got cut, and we're, we, even though it was pretty close to finish, and we're, we never will get that back, and I think, um, we may not get things back with cyberpunk. Uh, it sucks, but it's just the reality of it. You know, and you have people who are just so incredibly upset. And, you know, I've spent a lot of my life upset. And it's really not worth it. And I wish people would realize just how destructive and pointless it is. And, like, it's even ironic in a way because you have people who are like cheering on who will be cheering on these investors who are bringing lawsuit against the company but i would imagine those same investors were part of the reason the game was pushed out so it's sort of cyclical you know and should you really be cheering on the people who are the reason the game was pushed out should the studio have ever went public probably not you know, you look at these small indie games or these Kickstarter games, and they're they feel really great and they feel really complete. And um, then you look at these games like from Bethesda or you know these huge studios like Watchdog Legion, which I've heard nothing about. I don't think it's a terrible game. It's just people aren't that hyped about it. It feels like Cyberpunk came along and blew it away. And, you know, they all have the same problems. And I think that's really what you're seeing and experiencing with CDPR. Is they want to be AAA. They want to be the next big studio. And it, the same thing happened with Outer Worlds, which I don't think was very good. But that was like, oh, Obsidian's going over to Microsoft. Here we go. And then you have Outer Worlds. And it just was very blah, very like, mediocre. And, you know, this, this corporatism probably 
and I say this, it's not a very philosophical or theoretical, well, like, it's not like I'm out here reading Marx, but this corporatism is counter to art in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. I just wish people would try to maybe contextualize, look inward a little when they are this mad about the game. And people are very mad about this game. Like some people are incredibly mad. And it generally is never never worth it. Unless you're talking about um living under a dictator or, you know, racial injustice or something, it's typically not worth it to be this mad about an entertainment product. Um you know, I, I say that again as someone who's spent a lot of my life mad. <sighs> but wait, hopefully this video gets through to someone. I decided to make it a video because I feel like writing is really lost in the solar. And uh, I had the jacket, and I had the ram, and I had the glasses. So why not? So hopefully someone got something out of this hopefully i was actually insightful and just didn't spout off common sense shit like a lot of video game youtubers seem to seem to do and hopefully i didn't put you to sleep um you know if you hate the game just don't play it just refund it if you don't like elder scrolls games you're gonna hate this game if you do like Elder Scrolls games, I think you like it, but you might hate it anyway. I have no idea. I would say uh, go play Alpha Protocol. <laughs> go play something else. You know, that's probably the best advice I could give you regarding this game. Unless you really want, because it's really just Cyber Skyrim and it's fun. I've, I've been having a blast with it, but you don't have to like it and you don't have to play it. Now. Yeah. There's a world of shit to entertain yourself. I guess that's it. And I'm not doing another cut. What you get is what you see. <laughs>